for the people by the people news first face to face with jamal ratnayak Very good evening and welcome to yet another edition of Face to Face coming to you live and direct from our news for studios here in Colombo. Today is the 28th of February 2024 for the news for steam. I am Jayama Ratnayaka and this evening we have a guest who is a returning guest on Face to Face, one of the more youthful members of parliament. He is none other than member of parliament Shanakya Rasmanikem of the Tamil National Alliance. A very good evening to you Mr. Rasmanikem and welcome back on the show. Thank you Jamal and good evening to you and uh, all the viewers as well. Certainly. So Mr. Rasmanikem let's uh, start off our conversation tonight on to something that clearly affects both you and I and also our viewers. If I may put it this way the people of Sri Lanka are currently living in a haze they do not know what will happen in the future there are very high costs of living taxes both direct and indirect that have soared over the past months there's political instability you might say to a certain extent because we do not know what sort of government is in power although the, there is a government in power we do not know if they have the people's mandate as the opposition has also pointed out there are crimes taking place in the country and also national assets being divested or sold off and so on so against all of this and against this backdrop mr rasmani kim how long can sri lanka expect to continue on this knife edge well um, i think uh, you summarized all the issues uh, in the country um, presently faced by uh, most citizens i think uh, this is precisely what we said um, back in 2022 mm. when uh, president gotabe rajapaksha resigned mm. and president ranil wickremasinghe took over uh, we knew that this trend would continue i mean today uh, the dollar has uh, somewhat uh, gotten uh st- rather the rupee has gotten slightly stronger uh shortages are no more mm. uh you know there's uninterrupted power supply all that is true and um but how long can someone just use those uh, few things as uh, the reason for you know them staying in power or for people to accept that they've done a great job mm. when the when inflation is so much uh inflation is still even though inflation has come down in the last this year yes the hyper inflation that we had where the cost the prices of goods have increased uh, tripled almost yes. haven't really uh, come down so mm. the salaries haven't increased uh, to match the cost uh, to match the cost of living mm. so uh, the answer to your question about how much longer will uh, this continue for i'm pretty sure we will have to uh, continue like this till there's an election and uh, post election also it will take some time for whoever uh, becomes president or mm. forms a government if it's parliament election mm. to get a, a proper plan in place for sri lanka because right now uh, we are just surviving uh, you know every day because uh, imf agreement on uh, one hand i mean we have not heard of uh, any updates i remember when president ranil wickremasinghe took over there used to be tweets where he would uh, tweet every few days to give the country an update on what's going on and i don't think uh, you know there have been any updates mm. uh, as opposed to gotabe rajapaksha's address the nation uh, once in a while i mean we are all even as members of parliament unless we are really keen to find out uh, you know we are all kept in the dark so to come out of this situation is the only way to come out of this situation is to attract foreign direct investments and i think the government has failed to do so Uh, i think um, there's and all these uh, delegations going to meet world leaders and all that have just merely they merely seem to be uh, you know tours that uh, ministers and uh, you know delegates have enjoyed mm. uh, and there hasn't really been anything that the that that has actually uh, come through those uh, mm. uh, visits a meaningful outcome a meaningful outcome that is tangible that we can see mm. and also you know we speak about i mean the tourism numbers uh, you know that is one of the things that uh, the government i saw yesterday also foreign minister has said that we'll have a record 2.5 million tourists, tourists. but uh, the based on little information that we have because the government's information that the government puts out or the finance ministry or the central bank puts out mm. is very inadequate to actually make uh, 
decisions or make assessments on based what on. the real situation is but based on the information that was put out mm. the the amount of money that was made through tourism income versus the tour number of tourist arrivals that was put out by the president i think mm. if you figure, if you look at that it's only about 54 dollars per tourist irrespective of how long they've stayed in the country so right. if a tourist said on average so do we really if a tourist had stayed 10 days in the country mm. that's probably five dollars and 40 cents usd that a tourist had spent over per day per, per for the 10 for the 10 for days the 10 day. for, right for okay. for 10 i mean okay so a tourist the number of tourist arrivals mm. divided by the revenue that tourism has generated according to the government if you divide the tourist arrivals by the amount of money that they claim to have mm. that it has brought into the country when you divide that per tourist it's only per 54 dollars right. and i know some tourists have been here for months mm. so you know that is are we really attracting the right quality uh, tourists i mean i saw a while i was on on my way here i saw a post where some tourists had posted on a group online it's getting criticized heavily where there's they have offered 6000 rupees to go to the airport from Baddur right. and if there's anybody you know to so that 60000 6000 rupees is not even 20 dollars so mm. you know are we attracting the right uh, tourists you mm. know just having a large number of tourism tourists doesn't uh, uh, mean that you know we are on the right path so all of this can only come to some change could happen mm. uh, through a change of uh, uh, you know the party or the person who's in charge or even to bring political stability so i don't know i mean i'm, I'm hoping that uh, whichever election that is uh, some predict that there could be parliament elections if uh, the current president can't uh, you know doesn't uh, seem confident enough to win that he might dissolve parliament and some feel that the president's election will happen first some feel that uh, the executive presidency may get abolished mm. so a lot of speculation uh, as a member of parliament i you know i'm unfortunately i, I am just uh, another citizen in this country in terms of insight that we have on what could happen mm. uh, with elections but i think um, at least the beginning of the end or beginning of the end of the suffering can only happen through an election right. just having an election is doesn't mean it's going to change things overnight but at least we will have a uh, fresh uh, you know new path that we can uh, embark, know, on. embark on yes. right so since you mentioned tourists before we touch on the mm. topic of elections I want to ask you because you represent uh, Batiklo which is the eastern province is a tourist hotspot during the season we know Arugambe, Trincomalee very uh, pristine beaches where a lot of tourism uh, tourism is attracted to tourists flock to those areas and today I was reading a news article where it said that certain tourists from uh, multiple countries have arrived in those areas and they are conduct carrying out businesses reading local businesses of uh, vital revenue so has your constituents reached out to you on that and flagged you on that matter what do you have to say <coughs> on that first of all well let me correct you in the eastern province it's only Arugambe that right. uh, gets a large number of tourists but yeah. Arugambe has already always had its own culture uh, with tourism it, we've never really seen the high-end tourists who come to okay. Arugambe it's been I mean, nothing has changed in the last two year or two. Mm. But whereas if you take Pasikuda or Trincomalee, we get the uh, big spenders because okay. the hotels are bigger and the hotels are nicer mm. and the beaches are more, uh, Pasikuda is a bay. Mm. But the, the, the tourists, the type of tourists we got to Aragambe has always remained the same. It's more the backpackers and the, the surfers. Uh, the surfers. Mm. And there has been an economy there. But uh, I, I think you must have read an article where there are Israel, uh, uh, tourists from yes. Israel and tourists from Russia. Mm. Uh, this, is a, this has become a problem. I, in fact, about a year ago, there was a situation where some locals were assaulted by uh, some Russian tourists and the, Rus the locals were admitted to hospital. And the police did not take action. Mm. And they were accused of being involved in the drugs, drugs trade, as drug trade, trade of drugs. Okay. I don't know what sort of drugs. Mm. So I alerted the police at the time. And they said uh, that yes, there was there were some complaints, but uh, this is what happens mm. when there is no real uh, uh, plan. Uh, you know, I remember uh, the market was opened up for Russians, and there were a large number of Russians who were brought in, and they were treated like uh, you know some yes. uh, heads of states mm. at the airport. They were welcomed. I mean, at that time itself, initially, uh, yes. initially, I mean, we, these are all consequences of that, mm. and I think also there is an issue with. Uh, now the Russia, now we have direct flights to Russia. I think, if I'm not mistaken, mm. from Colombo, yes. and uh, the situation in Ukraine is such that where the people can go to Ukraine. So, I think there is also a gazette I uh, read it somewhere where 
Russians and Ukraine citizens were get given uh, free extensions yes, on their visas. Visa so I think these sort of things must be revisited mm. now that uh, I, I mean, true uh, Russia Ukraine issue is a problem, but. Uh, if it's on humanitarian grounds, it's a different matter. But if there is no, absolutely no restrictions on these people, uh, tourists, so-called tourists, it's, it is a problem. And it is not only in Arugambe. I, I'm, I've heard that it's uh, become quite a problem in the south. Mm. Mm, there's some article that said there's some place called Little Moscow now in right. Unawatuna. I see. So, you know, these will have long-term implications on the country's, uh, you know... Revenue streams. Uh, the more economy. than the revenue stream, it's the country's ecosystem. Right. Uh, you know, uh, this this is, this is going to be a problem. So mm. I really hope that the minister in charge of tourism can uh, take some action to mm. address this. Otherwise, uh, in a few uh, years' time, we will have only a uh, uh, you know, certain uh, uh, level of tourists who don't... I mean, the tourists are a burden on this country's uh, free system as well. The tourists are able to access free health. Mm. Tourists are able to access subsidized transport. Mm. Tourists are able to enjoy... I mean, the traffic has increased. Yes. So there is all these indirect mm. uh, costs that the government has to bear on behalf of these tourists. Yes. So, and if they don't even spend uh, yes. as much as uh, the government expects, I mean, based on their numbers, it's only fifty-four dollars per tourist. That is, if they stay, I'm saying one day. So, mm. if they stay ten days, that is only five dollars forty a day. So, yes. I mean, this is something that really needs to be looked at. It's just not the numbers, but as always, you know, our country, you know, the misinformation and misleading the public has been always. Uh, <laughs> One of the biggest things that they do to, you know, hmm. um, stay to a street, keep st staying keep holding on to power. power. Hmm. So the minister boasting about, ministers boasting about uh, tourism arrivals, as opposed to the revenue from it is absolute joke. Right. So speaking about uh, keeping hold of power, your guess is as good as mine regarding uh, what sort of election will be held this year. The government and its representatives keep on asserting that the presidential election will be held on time this year and thereafter general election will be held. But the opposition has hit back and said that the government is playing certain tricks, trying to amend the constitution, trying to abolish executive presidency. They might not even have the presidential election. But if and when the presidential election is announced, what sort of trajectory will the TNA take? Who will you support or back as your presidential candidate because regularly in most presidential elections we have seen a front runner we can see but this time around it is quite dubious or rather hazy to say the least regarding who might eventually end up the victor at any sort of election more probably a presidential election so where does the TNA lie in this larger gamut of uh, support of candidates so, Amal, I think it's a bit too early for me to articulate a position on behalf of the TNA. Mm. Uh, we are yet to have discussions as the Tamil National Alliance on, uh, like you said, you know, we it's uh, not just with the not just with with election which mm. election will come first. Even if it, it even with the presidential election itself, even about the candidates, it's your guess is good as mine because there's a lot of speculation and a lot of hearsay. So we can't base we can't, as the TNA we can't sit down and uh, decide. But I can just give you uh, an assessment that I have mm. on uh, what, how it might, what might happen. Uh, look, you know, last election, uh, you know, the Tamil vote uh, was pretty much uh, made irrelevant. You know, Gota's campaign was that he can become the leader without uh, any support of from the Tamils or the Muslims, and was a hardcore uh, Sinhala nationalist uh, sort of campaign mm. with this uh, Ranavirua. Uh, slogan. Sort of slogan, mm. but uh, I think it was you know Gota learned it the hard way that uh, he can't uh, just be the president of one com community. Community till you get elected, you can you know say whatever you want. But once you're elected, you're held accountable by uh, you know conventions that the country ratified. You know there's so many other things, mm. but I think unlike the 2019 election, 2025 election is going to to fin 24 election yes. or 25 election mm. is going to you know, it's whoever who is going to win will need the support of everybody. And uh, I think it doesn't matter what uh, these, I mean, let's to be upfront, we have, we clearly see three people's names. So AKD has, Sandra Kumara Disanayaka mm. has mentioned that he is the candidate of uh, the the NPP Balibay, or yes. JVP. Mm. And leader of the opposition has made it very clear that he is the candidate of uh, SJB. SJB. And there is also uh, Ranil Vikramasinghe's party, UMP, has said that that 
uh, that he is going to be their candidate in a grand and grand alliance mm. so it doesn't matter what the three candidates have uh, what their positions have been on the tamil tamil people's issues in the past because it is what their position is for the future, future. Yes. So for an example in 2005 i know president ranil wickremesinghe even went to the extent of uh, offering a federal uh, constitution even System, in, yes. in, in 2005 mm. Uh, honorable opposition leader uh, spoke about uh, you know devolution and tamil people's issues in the 2019 run up to the 2019 election mm. so in the future uh, if there is a election we need to know these all three candidates if they if there are more than all them as well yes uh, have to articulate their position on uh, have to tell us mm. what their position is on uh, the issues that the tamil people face and it's a it's a serious issue that needs to be resolved it's been 75 plus years and we are still talking about uh, an arrangement where power can be shared mm. and uh, it always becomes a hot topic uh, pre election just to get the votes and then that's what has happened in the mm. past and post election various reasons are put forward to stop it so i think um, as tamil representatives uh, we need to be very uh you know we would be uh, we would make sure that we speak to these leaders and i'm pretty sure that none of the three leaders are going to say that they are not going to address this issue mm. but uh, so we will have to see who uh, you know what what their proposals are and uh, not only just that uh, you know we will have to see their grand uh, alliance so if they have uh, people who have uh, uh committed crimes against humanity mm. supporting them if there are people who robbed this country mm. in their alliances it is not just the tamil people's issue that we can't uh, just because some crook comes forward and says we will resolve the tamil people's issue and they absolutely uh you know you can you can't uh, give them a clean slate we can't mm. no i mean more than that we can't we can't be uh, we're not going to be selfish as tamil ah, representatives right, right. we will think okay. on behalf of Understood. the country about mm. the greater good uh so all that matters mm. but uh, one of the things that um, that i've seen is is that something that there is this uh, move mm. um, i'm not too sure who is supporting that or who is uh, uh who would benefit out of mm. it is to have a tamil candidate contest for the presidential election right now this is a very serious uh, situation where if there is a tamil candidate and it could be a tamil i mean i i'm not i don't know names there's a lot of uh, discussion and dialogue that's going around about a tamil candidate being put forward, put forward yes and with very uh, how would i say very extreme positions mm. uh, you know for to, for the tamil people mm. uh, knowing very well that uh, it will serve absolutely no purpose for the uh, the country or even for the tamil people mm. but it will fuel somebody else's uh, campaign so yes. for an example if uh somebody comes up with some let's say you know that power devolution is not uh, enough you right. know it's a pray right. i i don't know what the words are going to be mm. but if that could you know that could sometimes let's say if hard positions are put forward then you know campaigning is done and by chance the tamil people actually vote for that then the the, the three candidates that we mentioned the fight or the the contest will be uh between them based on the votes in the rest of the country barring the north and the east okay. barring the north tamil yes. speaking people mm. so in some case that could benefit some person some case it could be not a benefit for someone so yes. disadvantage for someone so we are very you know we are very concerned about mm. uh, this development as well because uh, if uh, you know if if at all if something like that happens uh, you know we will uh, in this country again there might be a possibility where uh, we are even further Uh, you know mm. uh, how would i say um uh, i'm not i can't come up the word but it will it will make up make us even uh, more um disjointed yeah basically. something like that mm. you know so the words are coming coming yes, to me right now no, no, I'm but sure uh, you so it will it will be it will it might not be a healthy uh, situation mm. as well uh, so i think we are very uh, i am as mm. a uh, uh, member of parliament representing the tamil people concerned about uh, these sort of developments mm. because end of the day we shouldn't uh, really use the votes of the tamil people to uh, benefit uh, one person if, yes. if at all it should benefit the entire uh, nation entire nation and also it should have uh, uh, you know unresolved issues of the equal tamil people equal prosperity for every single citizen clearly so uh, let's we'll have to wait uh, till it gets closer to see but then also there is this prospect of parliament elections yes and uh, i mean 
that might be a most more likely scenario if if the the Pohotua SLP mm. put up their own candidate mm. and then SJB has its own candidate and JVP has its own candidate then president Vikram Singh might not even have a party that has a mach- that has a uh, uh, organized grassroots level yes. up to the grassroots level a mach- uh, party with all the machinery to capable of winning a presidential even election even capable of you know even you know coming close right you know? so basically of mounting a challenge proper challenge yes. Yes. because mm. slpp sjb and jvp all have a base right i mean slpp's base is the formerly slfp base mm. sjb's base more or less is the ulp, UNP base, base that uh, came through so and i don't think president vikramasinghe has done much to mm. uh, you know rectify or strengthen the ump's mm. base since he's come as president so you know time will tell as to what uh, election will come first if right. if the parliament elects because if it's a parliament election mm. i mean you know president can upset the uh, situation mm. and then uh, uh, but well, we will thinking about the country mm. i don't know how uh how he how, can do it with a clear conscience well more than the conscience i mean uh you know as, as a country we should all be concerned because you know it's the lives of uh the people that mm. is at stake uh, you know instability will further uh make the country's you know make the suffering much bigger and mm. even now you mentioned about fuel prices and uh, electricity prices mm. i mentioned this in parliament as well the electricity prices could have been reduced there was no need to increase the prices in november and december right uh, it was purely done uh, because of now either you can say it's a inability of the uh, energy and power minister and his staff to mm. figure out what the rainfall was yes based on the rainfall you know we were, there was predictions yes. were the rainfall is going to be high yes. so there was no need to mm. increase the power uh, and energy cost. Uh, the electricity cost mm. but now i was told that they'll reduce it by uh, new year so but I, now sri lanka is facing a dry spell once again well we are <laughs> facing a dry spell once again but mm. i think uh, the prices the price drop even if it happens mm. uh, will happen purely for the benefit of uh, gaining political gaining mileage. political mileage so that shouldn't be the case it should be more about uh, the suffering of the people passing the benefit on to the people at the right time when possible at mm. least you know yes. i mean at least you know january is a tough time for all families mm. who have kids yes the new term of school starts and mm. you know it's uh, most it's a new year it's a mm. new year so at that time if there was any and in december is a festive season you know people like to go They on travel to and around family, yes not at least to visit their Relatives, friends and yes. family so mm. not being uh, being so insensitive mm. and just purely thinking about political mileage i mm. think uh, you know the, the the repercussions will come i would say in upcoming elections right certainly very vociferous about all matters of the state let's uh, very quickly touch upon the regional impact of uh, sri lanka as a player and also the superpowers in our region particularly india we know that india's influence has been growing over the years especially since india supported sri lanka during the crisis and the main concern now is the strained relationship between india when it comes to the fishermen's issue the fishermen of india and sri lanka are at loggerheads and have been for such a long time this there seem to be any sort of resolution for this matter mr rasamani kem in your eyes you have protested against this you have called for a conflict resolution in this matter but in your eyes do you believe that this will be resolved at any point if there is proper intervention well uh, this particular issue is uh, uh, something that can easily be resolved if we enforce the law mm. um you see um i was um, watching the district development council meeting for jaffna right. on social media where mem- elected members of because this fisherman indian fisherman issue is more of a northern uh, part of the sri lanka issue problem, yes. less mm. in the east because the indian trawlers don't come as They far do. as trinco or vatiklo so i mean yes. this is not something that we face as an issue but mm. like you said we have we even led a uh, protest march using boats from mulativ to jaffna yes. uh you know protesting against it so at the district development council meeting some elected representative from the northern province from jaffna raised these concerns from the uh, district development council chair who also happens to be the fisheries minister for the country right. honorable douglas the another so at the time the the navy commander for that area said that they are scared to go and uh, implement the law mm. 
now this country you know we, we talk about national security there is you know around 400000 uh, strong military in the mm. country and it is all about uh, you know protecting the nation and all that but the naval commander for that area is saying that he is too scared to go or their their fleet is too scared to go and uh, stop the uh, boat illegal boats from coming into our water right. so so this is clearly a government uh government's inability to implement the law i know there are laws that have been enacted honorable sumandran uh, was the one who was instrumental in enacting one of those laws where if they are caught in sri lankan waters you know where they are charged and their boats are confiscated so if they do that with a few vessels at least there'll be some sort of fear to mm. cross the water you place. know we can't completely stop uh, uh, the, the fishermen coming yes. but at least there'll be a fear saying you know if you go then there's court proceedings and uh, you know yes. so and there is no way to there there could be instances where people cross the borders uh, international borders uh, uh, unknowingly mm. but this has come to a point where you know these some of these uh, trawlers come right to uh, the, the northern no, not uh, the Sri border this is still territorial waters no no no, no. the coast i see so, so where you are once i was in jaffna mm. from the coast you could see the the that trawler. we were in mana during in december uh, no in january early january and one of the uh, one of the sri lankan fishermen who owns a boat mm. he said that uh, we are not going today because it's the the turn for the trawlers so i actually thought that there was some understanding where indian fishermen you know yeah. and the sri lankan fishermen to see they the the farm the fishermen from mana mm. now only go out to see on the days that the indian, indian trawlers, trawlers don't come don't encroach right they don't come to the mm. sri lankan water so it has come to that point so this is something that the minister can enforce but then we are told that there are parties within sri lanka also who engage in uh, trawling bottom right. trawling and that's a huge uh, market and i remember in parliament someone accused uh, uh, some minister also mm. about being in on the deal right. where you know they are taking a percentage Certain of commission uh, yeah mm. so so this is in completely destroying the livelihood of the northern uh, fishermen so and this is you know and I'm, i'm 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 i can be i can be assured that the government of india's position is also to not to uh, destroy someone else's uh, livelihood. livelihood so it is something that needs to be resolved mm. but over the last four years uh, i think minister for fisheries has been a mp and a minister elected from jaffna so the fact that he has done nothing tells you something you know being the fisheries if i was in the position if the government didn't let me resolve the issues of my people i would resign from that post and you know if he wants to be continuous minister get some other minister so mm. and also there is a there is a sense of uh, uh, you know people think that him being a tamil minister is one of the reasons why he has been appointed the minister, minister of fisheries fish. because any the, the the tamil nadu government had some any sort of sympathy towards the northern and eastern tamil people it causes a little bit of a friction between uh, tensions between the two communities two in the communities. tamils of the southern part of india and the tamils of the northern, northern part, part of sri lanka, of sri lanka. so yeah. this should be really you know looked at without uh, these political angles and purely looked as uh, you know impacting the livelihood of the Uh, fishermen on mm. i mean both sides also if uh, the north indian i'm sorry south indian fishermen come here and get arrested and they are produced in court and they are charged with uh, you know whatever it impacts them as well but it is a law of the country that needs to be implemented and they need to be aware that if they cross these waters they will be penalized that they will be penalized and if right. the navy is too sc- they are saying too scared to go and stop uh, indian fishermen right. what if some uh, vessel from you know some other yeah. country that comes to capture sri lanka so mm. what's the point of even talking about uh, boasting about national security and showing off at golf face on independence day when you are unable to go and uh, you know Truly stop the sri lanka territorial in- integrity from fishermen right <laughs> certainly so <laughs> unarmed fishermen unarmed fishermen yeah. certainly so let's hope that all our political leaders make the genuine effort to take sri lanka to a better place internally and also regionally my guest tonight was shanakin rasmanike member of parliament representing the tna thank you very much for joining me mr rasmanike thank you and that's the way it was on face to face tonight take care and good night